Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from theebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a review of the new Nook Glow Light from Barnes & Noble. So, uh, let's go ahead and turn on the glow light. You hold down the end button right here. And there we go. Probably not going to show a whole lot with the bright light on it, so let me turn this light off here. Alright, so, uh, Barnes & Noble, they went ahead and changed their design a lot with this new Nook Glow Light. Their older Nooks, like the uh, Nook Simple Touch, it had the page buttons on the side, and I had a power button on back, and I had the concave back right there. It also had the micro SD card slot. Uh, this new Nook it has a new design. It doesn't have the page buttons on the side. Uh, it just has the uh, little end button here uh, for the Nook, uh, and it doesn't have the concave back. It doesn't have the micro SD card slot. The uh, power button's been repositioned here on the side. Uh, and then we've just got that button, and then the Nook button down here. So the biggest improvements for the Nook Glow Light come in terms of the screen. Uh, it has higher contrast screen than the other Nooks. It has the 1024 by 758 resolution instead of 800 by 600. So this is the first Nook to get the boost in resolution. It's a little bit late. Some of the other uh, e-readers have already had that for a long time. But as far as the front light goes, it's a lot better than it was on the last Nook. The Glow Light uh, Nook, the first edition, had a really poor front light. And it kind of had this uh, uh, the way the light layer was on the screen, it sort of degraded the quality of the text. Instead of being black, it made it look more gray. But this time around, Barnes & Noble has got the front light a lot better than last time. Let's go ahead and compare it to a couple of these other current e-readers on the market. So, compared to the Kindle Paperwhite, uh, it stands up pretty good. Uh, the screen is very white, as you can tell. B&Ed did a very good job about getting the uh, background color a lot whiter with the uh, uh, light than uh, other e-readers. So here's the... Uh, the Kobo Aura by comparison, as you can see, it is much yellower. Uh, the Nook, the new Nook, I've been giving it a hard time because of the lack of micro SD and the removal of the buttons, but it, it clearly has a superior screen to the Kobo Aura, which is a, a nicer designed e-reader in my opinion, and it has the uh, flush uh, screen, but uh, the color, as you can see, the uh, text is much nicer on the uh, Nook Touch, or the Glow Light Nook here, and uh, just the screen color is a lot nicer. So, you can go in here and actually adjust the uh, brightness of the screen. So I got it a full blast right now. Looks pretty good about half. That just depends on the lighting you got in the room. Um, let me go ahead and turn it back up. And of course you can turn it all the way off if you want. See the check mark right there. If you just check it off you can turn it all the way off. Or like I said you can hold the Nook button to turn it on and off. One thing that caught my eye about the Nook immediately when I got it out of the box is and I don't know if it'll show up here, but you can see gaps between this outer rubberized edge and the frame, which is kind of weird. You can see the gap along the power button right there. You can see it along the end button. So the first thing I do is I'm like, what's the deal with this? And I find that, look how easy that comes off. It's really strange. Um, there's all these, like, gadgets under there. Um, so I'm not too impressed with that design idea right there. I mean, why would that thing come off so easily? But I think they could have used some glue or some adhesive. But aside from the uh, weird edge that comes apart. Um, the design is quite nice. It's really light and it fits very comfortably in your hands. Uh, the Nooks have always been good about fitting comfortably in your hands and this one is no exception even though they got rid of the concave back and the page buttons. It still feels really comfortable in your hands and it's really light so uh, I do like this Nook better than I thought to be honest with you. Uh, just from the screen alone is the huge upgrade over the uh, glow light Nook from last year and like I said it's even better than the Kobo Aura and some of these other e-readers. Uh, it's really comparable to the Kindle, like I said. I'll do some real comparison reviews. I just wanted to show you the screen. Uh, one thing about the Kindle is it's more even. You see just a little tiny bit of shadows down here because the lights are down here. Uh, with the Nook, you can see more shadows, but they have it up at the top because the lights are actually at the top. You can see them uh, inside there. Uh, so the Nook does have just a little bit more shadowing than the Kindle. I, say the, I would say the Kindle Paperwhite 2 still has the, be the best screen of any uh, ink e-reader yet as far as the front light goes, but I would put the Nook in a second place. Uh, I'm impressed with the screen. It does look uh, really nice. It's a uh, nice even lighting and it also has the uh, higher resolution screen like I uh, mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk software now. Uh, as far as software, it's pretty much 95% the same as the other Nooks. Uh, we can go in here, uh, bust open the table of contents and it also is a place where it uh, keeps your highlights and your notes as well as your bookmarks. So uh, you can scroll down just by going and scanning like this. Uh, one thing that's uh, different about this Nook compared to other Nooks and other e-readers in general is it will never do a full page refresh like when you're just texting forward like this. Um, it always does the partial page refresh. It will do the full page refresh occasionally I've noticed like in menus and like at the Nook shop and on home screen and stuff but I have yet to see it do a full page refresh while uh, reading an e-book like this. 
Um, I'm kind of wondering maybe I might do it with some PDFs. I'll have to load some PDFs in here later. Uh, it might be uh, different for some like image-based PDFs and such. It might refresh more. So as far as text goes, though, I mean, it looks really good. I do notice some ghosting, though, with the no refresh. Like if you have an image uh, from a picture, like I was going through the uh, user guide and it has some pictures, and sometimes you can see like the outline of the picture when you page forward. Uh, so I kind of wish there was a setting to turn full refresh on just for people who don't like it, but um, actually the ghosting doesn't seem to be too bad at all. I'm not seeing any at all right now. Uh, the screen, I'm, I really like the screen. It's really white and really clear. Uh, definitely uh, can't say enough about that. But as far as the other features go, you got the usual search and go to option. So. I mean, the whole, you can enter a page number, the whole uh, software, I mean, I don't think really BNN did anything at all. They just sort of like changed the home screen and just a couple of minor details and really it's just the same exact software basically as the uh, Nook Touch and the Nook Glow Light before it. So uh, it's got a couple of different fonts in here like the, I noticed on my Nook Touch it's got uh, different, uh, it's got Cecilia in here, this one's got Georgia's the base font here. Uh, it does look really good I think. Um, I, one thing about the Nook fonts is I think they look better than the Kindle fonts. I think they look better than a lot of e-reader fonts, to be honest with you. They're really uh, clear, uh, really sharp, and they got nice thickness to them. Uh, sometimes here lately with these new high-resolution screens, the theme seems to be to make fonts more spindly, but I don't know. I, they seem pretty dark as far as the uh, Nook uh, glow light here. When you compare it to the original Nook Touch, um, Fonts always seem to be a little bit bolder on the older Nooks or on the older e-readers. Like the uh, same goes with like the basic Kindle, um, just because they used bolder fonts back then when the uh, screen resolution wasn't as good. But I mean, the fonts are very comparable. Uh, it's just a hair uh, bolder on the older Nooks, but with the uh, high resolution screen and the front light, I mean, the text just looks uh, loads better than it did uh, on the previous Nooks. So as far as software features, I've mostly showed them, showed them to you right here. So. If you come in here, you get the information about a book, and you can archive it. So that's how you get it to disappear entirely from your home screen, how I found out. Uh, so let's go back. Oh, there's a bug here. Watch this. If I hit back, then it goes back to the shop where I was browsing in the shop before, so it takes me back to the book, which is annoying. But there is a button up here where you can always go back to your book. Um, so uh, they need to iron out that bug, though, because anytime you open anything that references the store, it goes back to your shopping where you were previously in the shop instead of going back to your book. So, uh, well, if you got that button up there, go back to your book, I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Um, so, as far as the other features go, it's the same exact stuff as the old Nooks. Hold down on the Word, you get the highlight, the Add Note options, so the little Add Note will pop up the uh, little uh, <coughs> note box here, as usual. So, like BNN, though, they still haven't added, like, any syncing options that actually work, and they don't have, like, you know, exporting options for their notes or highlights, so it's this more limiting than other e-readers so if you just hold down on a word and then you drag it or I mean if you just hold down on a word you gotta actually let off and then you can drag the end to do the highlights so this Nook it still has a uh, infrared touch screen instead of the capacitive screen that some of the other e-readers like the Kindle and Kobo Aura are going with uh, it still has the indented uh, recess screen here so that you can uh, get the, uh, or the uh, infrared sensors in there so uh, you hold down on a word Oops hold on to the word and you get up the uh, other options down here you can do the dictionary one thing I noticed about the dictionary is they have the very large fonts so if you have difficulty seeing you're not gonna have uh, very much problem seeing that font because it's very large as far as the dictionary lookup goes so uh, I've pretty much shown you all the ebook options as far as features go uh, if we go back here to the home screen you can see that it has your sections down here for library shop and search so I used to like it like I said you hit the end button and it used to bring up the uh, menu options uh, on the older nooks uh, so it's unavoidable to go to the home screen now. You have to go to the home screen if you want to access your library before you could just avoid the home screen and the stupid advertisement down here. One thing that irritates me no end about Barnes Noble's marketing is they say there's no ads on this, but then they have the recommended Nook section right here on your home screen. It takes up half the home screen and you can't get rid of it, so it's pretty annoying. Uh, I used to like the older Nooks, like I was saying, you could just bypass entirely and always go to your library. Uh, but this one, not so much. Okay, so as far as library view, the... Uh, Options haven't really changed much. You can view as the, as you can see, it did a full page refresh right there. It does it every other page when you view in the library. Uh, you can view your library as uh, book covers like this. You can switch over to the list view. Uh, the Barnes Nobles uh, has the different sections. So you got the books and the newsstand section. You can create shelves. It's the same sort of deal as it was with the last nook and just uh, create shelves on the fly and then add your books into it that way. So as for, oh, uh, this little icon up here, this is your notification and it keeps pestering me to share recommendations with friends so it's really irritating me that's the third time it's come up but uh, anyway let's go back to 
All right, let's go back to the library view here. So like I said, you can't just get there by hitting that. Now you gotta go to the home screen, then library. Then we can go here. So uh, one thing I forget to mention often about Barnes & Noble is their Lend Me section. I kind of forget about it because, uh, I don't know, the whole Lend Me thing with eBooks has kind of disappeared, but uh, still some publishers allow you to lend eBooks for one time for 14 days to a friend or something. And no or Barnes & Noble is the one company that makes it easy because they have a whole section for Lend Me and you can actually uh, just lend ebooks from your Nook. So, I mean, that's something you don't get on other e-readers. Um, you also got the uh, your My File section. So, one main limitation with this Nook, like I said, you don't have the micro SD card slot, and they also limited sideloaded content to 500 megabytes. So, that's all you're going to have un, uh, available for non uh, BNN content. So, uh, that's definitely a limitation uh, compared to the older Nooks and some of the other e-readers out there. So, it's one of the main uh, things uh, to consider. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of other things to show you here, folks. We've got a few options in the settings menu. Uh, up here, you can go and uh, adjust your glow light. you got the different options for device info. We can go in here and uh, you, get, you can d add uh, different screensaver options here. we got the aspiration or the authors it shows, and we can do uh, the screen timeout option here. Uh, we've also got the time and the shop and the social. So uh, the search, uh, basically, it's just like the older Nooks, and it's pretty... Uh, basic from a software standpoint. You don't have a lot of the uh, features like you do on the Kobo Aura and the Kindle Paperwhite where you have like the estimated reading time and you have uh, the vocabulary builder. And so there's a lot of uh, different things to consider when uh, getting an e-reader. So the Nook it definitely excels where the screen is concerned. I really do like this screen and the front light looks fantastic. Uh, but as far as the features go, Barnes & Noble didn't add anything. They just removed the micro SD card slot, moved the page buttons and uh, basically gave us the same software as the older Nook. So uh, while I do like the screen, I do like the form factor, and the white color is actually growing on me because it kind of makes the screen seem a little whiter. Um, uh, there's still the limitations of the software. I wish, wish BNN had focused a little bit more on adding some new features to the Note because it really hasn't gotten any uh, interesting new features for a long time. So uh, that's one thing to consider. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Uh, check out the ebookreader.com for more information. 